In this unit, we're going to talk about the Laplace transform. And then in the following unit, we're going to come back and see how we can utilize the Laplace transform to do circuit analysis. So keep in mind that even though the Laplace transform is a powerful circuit analysis tool, it's also very useful in other areas as well. And so we'll see that in future classes such as control systems. So what is sort of the basic idea of our Laplace transform? So essentially what we're doing is we're starting with our time domain circuit and we're going to be moving over to our frequency domain circuit. So let's say we have some time domain circuit that we start with. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to move over here to our frequency domain circuit. And so how are we going to transfer from time domain to frequency domain? So we've talked about in previous sections the idea of impedances, and so that is, of course, going to the frequency domain as well. But here we're doing it a little bit differently, and we're going to use our Laplace transform. And so we're going to formally define that in the next video, but here we just want to get a basic idea of what we're doing. So once we're in this frequency domain, we're going to do all of our analysis. So let's consider we have some basic RLC circuit. Maybe we want to find some voltage across the capacitor. So we're going to do a Laplace transform, find that voltage across the capacitor in our frequency domain, and then once we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer back to our time domain. So then we come back to our time domain. So our time domain circuit. And so what we're going to have here in our time domain then is going to be our solution. And so something that we're going to talk about a little bit later on is how do we go sort of backwards from frequency domain to our time domain, and that's going to be with something called our inverse Laplace transform. And so we're going to talk specifically about how we do each of these things, how we go in both directions from time to frequency, uh, and, and how we do our analysis. Um, so really, actually, what we're going to be focusing on this unit is more these transitions between the frequency domain and the time domain. And then what we're going to do in the next unit is we're going to come back and focus on this analysis and see how we can use this Laplace transform to analyze our circuits. So before we get into the formal definition of the Laplace transform, um, we, we should probably answer the question, why do we even want to do this? This seems like a whole lot of work. Why can't we just stay in the time domain and get our solution directly in the time domain? And so, of course, in a lot of cases, we can do that, but there are several benefits to using our Laplace transform. So let's go ahead and write some of those down. So our benefits of our Laplace transform. So three key ones that we're going to look at. So the first one is that we can apply this to a wider variety of inputs than we could look at just in the time domain using our phaser analysis. So this can be applied to wider variety of inputs. than our phaser analysis. And so that's what I talked about a little bit earlier. We talked about changing our, uh, our, for instance, our inductance and capacitance to impedances, and then we can do phaser analysis. And so that worked well if we have a steady state sinusoidal signal. But what if, for instance, we have step signals? So maybe we have sort of something clicking on and off, so like a square wave input, or maybe we have some exponential input for a certain area. So all of these different types of inputs are going to be more easily dealt with using Laplace analysis. So another key benefit of Laplace transform is it makes our math actually easier. So it's an easy way to solve circuits with initial conditions. So by initial conditions, I mean initial inductor current, initial capacitor voltage, um, things like that. But sort of the big difference here is we, we've not covered it explicitly in this class, but for instance, if we think about an RL or an RC or an RLC circuit, 
what we had to do to analyze those is we had to use differential equations. So we had differential equations when we were working in the time domain. And what we're going to see is that when we go to the frequency domain, that becomes algebra. So algebra equations in our, so I'm not sure what I've written here, time me, okay, so time domain, there we go. And so these become frequency equations, or sorry, they become algebra equations in our frequency domain. And so of course, I think most people would agree that algebra in, in most cases is gonna be easier to deal with than uh, our differential equations. So the third and final advantage we're gonna list here is that we can characterize both our natural and forced responses at the same time. So it characterizes the total response, which consists of both of those two. So total response of the circuit. And so as I mentioned a second ago, that consists of both our natural response and our forced response. And so it does that in one operation. And so that's a lot nicer than having to break that up into sort of two parts. So we can just do it all in one go. And so we're gonna see these, these advantages more clearly once we start looking at our circuit analysis. But again, in this unit, what we're going to focus on is primarily how do we do these transforming, uh, how do we do these transformations? How do we go between our time and frequency domain?